So I'll switch to English and uh, I will uh, continue to say that uh, it was uh, for me, uh, I was very, really, very motivated when I returned here, when I was asked um, basically to come back to Košice and uh, start uh, developing uh, tourism and uh, destination management. Destination management was a, v it was a very new topic in 2009. Uh, people just were starting to talk about it and uh, there were not really many best practices uh, introduced uh, in, Co in uh, Košice or in Slovakia. So we decided to, uh, to write the project, uh, which is a uh, short name, um, Karat, as a Carpathian region, as an attractive destination and uh, involve uh, four regions from Ukraine, Romania, uh, and uh, Hungary, and to try um, to build or to try to um, initiate some sort of collaboration in a very different way as we, we used to be here. And uh, this collaboration was based on, uh, on uh, introducing public-private partnership. Um, as we know, we also know before the, the tourism was uh, managed just by, by the local authorities. And uh, the private sector was really lacking uh, some sort of um, involvement. They were very hesitating. I remember when I first met with the key stakeholders in Košice, uh, telling them that what we want to do, that we have really to prepare for, for year 2013. Um, it was like I was talking a very different language. So I was talking about destination management, about a very new model, and um, they didn't really understand uh, why, why we should go this way, why we should cooperate this way. So it was not really easy at the beginning, and uh, but the little steps, uh, the little steps and little quick wins uh, at, at the beginning were very important, and, and it was also about the people, uh, how you create the relationships uh, with these people to build the trust, and then uh, we we got on board uh, first uh, 20, 25, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, members of a newly established uh, DMO or destination management organization. Uh, based on the model public-private partnership. It was the first in Košice, I mean the first in Slovakia, uh, first city level in, in, uh, in Slovakia. And uh, later on when uh, the law of tourism after 25 years in Slovakia came into practice, of course then the other uh, DMOs or local, um, local um, partnerships were created, but uh, uh, there is still lots of uh, lots of uh, experience and education needed on how to how to really manage it effectively. Uh, there is always a question if we are ready for such a step or for such a change. And uh, the people kept uh, asking me, "Are we ready yet for that? Are we ready to do these uh, steps?" And uh, I thought that really that the project European European Capital of Culture could be uh, the project which could finally convince the people that uh, let's try it and let's, uh, let's um, trust each other and, uh, and uh, try to go to this kind of col collaboration. So in, uh, in, my first, uh, in my first part, I uh, just would like to uh, talk uh, about uh, what we have done uh, here in Košice, um, how we try to look at the, the city and uh, to develop it as a cultural tourism destination. Um, because when, 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 when I came in 2009, when the project was uh, in, the very beginning, uh, in the very beginning, we saw lots of traditional events and festivals which were constantly every year repeating, but it, it was not moving anywhere else. And uh, the project came with the new ideas, with the new uh, types of, uh, new types of uh, festivals or projects, which, uh, brought, uh, which were also based on contemporary art. And this was a really very difficult, I think, and very different for the people to try to um, see it as something, uh, something uh, um, successful or something uh, interesting for, for a visitor. But uh, we had only one chance to do it. So we had only three years before us, before the 2013. And uh, sometimes we had to do something without asking people if they want it, um, because I usually also uh, say that uh, you give, sometimes you give people something uh, they don't know that they want, or they don't, do, they don't know that they like it, because they have never experienced it, uh, they have never tried it, 
and uh, therefore sometimes this kind of approach uh, uh, pays off but uh, it's important to to build this relationship and that they know uh, and they feel from uh, from from you that uh, you know what you are doing um, then I mentioned a few projects and I will uh, talk uh, in my second uh, half about uh, the role of uh, but the future of destination management um, and uh, give some some fresh uh, some fresh uh, trends and some fresh information where uh, what we uh, what we should look at so at the beginning just for for, for few uh, many of you are from here and uh, have been to Košice we um, had uh, our start starting point position as uh, uh, industrial university city and IT hub where uh, with low or no awareness of, of of the city as a tourist destination there was no um, no awareness of the Slovakia <laughs> as a tourist destination when we talk to Western uh, visitors and uh, not talking about the city about any some some second city in in the country but the brand capital of culture comes uh, with the as, as a really strength uh, because it's a well-known brand especially in Western Europe so we started to to build on that um, and to start to promote uh, the city f in a first uh, first year to low uh, to raise awareness of the brand or as a capital of culture and uh, so the second sta step uh, of the visitor would be that they would look oh, okay so in 2013 is capital of culture in Slovakia where is the city and uh, the city is also known for its diversity multiculturalism from the history roots and uh, it's business destination. It was business destination f uh, six years ago, and it's still business destination uh, today. But uh, it has moved. Uh, it, it, the leisure segment has really moved uh, uh, a little bit up, especially due to uh, due to the project. So, in in terms of uh, the project, there were goals uh, uh, in creative economy, which. Uh, uh, which uh, Michal is uh, responsible for, and uh, okay, uh, which he's uh, focusing on. It's also linked to it's also linked to uh, to cultural tourism because he's developing the local artists and uh, uh, community development project, especially spots, uh, working with the local uh, people, uh, bringing um, also art into the neighborhoods and. Uh, also creating some sort of platform for creative tourism here. And uh, so through these projects, we're at the beginning, it's just the first five years of it, but we're creating some sort of basis to develop further uh, the creative tourism and also, also to, build, uh, to also the, uh, the um, cultural, cultural tourism. Destination management was also to uh, our goal to raise the visitor numbers because um, it's important for visitor uh, economy and uh, also to change an image, to change perception of the city, which was just uh, known as industrial and uh, with a cliche um, knowing of what, what uh, the city is about. And uh, to do it through new infrastructure in, in the city and new product developments. So new events, new events, new, new festivals, which would, be, which would bring some sort of added value on, uh, on, the, on the top of what city uh, has to offer. So just to uh, give you an example, we looked at uh, in, in our program aims, um, it was really important to stimulate the cultural scene, which is now uh, the legacy of it is uh, Michal's, uh, Michal's project as um, Escalator and Creative Industry Toolkit, supporting international relationships, uh, partnerships, which last, and they really last after 2013, especially through uh, Košice 2013, um, now Cultural Development Agency. And uh, the new infrastructure, which is the old place with the new functions. Um, and uh, just uh, for example, to give you an example, for those of you who are not uh, also from Košice, maybe for, for you who uh, are from here and uh, you, you have never heard the numbers. Yeah, there are no numbers, but behind the numbers are also the stories, which uh, were built uh, in these five years. Uh, developing the the Use the City Festival from 500 to 14,000 visitors, uh, it's a really tremendous uh, rise. Um, Summer in the Park uh, Festival, multi-genre from 1,000 to 6, uh, 500, or New Branch White Night, which many of you knows is the strongest weekend in in the city, 
uh, linking with the marathon. So um, from 14,000 to 50,000 uh, visitors in, uh, in 2013 and 14. Uh, when I presented uh, some results uh, at um, last time in uh, Rotterdam in Holland, they, they asked us uh, how many years we were working on it uh, that we have reached such a quick uh, change and such a really quick development. And they were really shocked that uh, it took us just five years uh, because in, in their environment, it would it would take 14 or I mean 15 about 15 years to uh, to come uh, to go through these stages. So it was a really big uh, big shock, but in a positive way uh, in the development of the city. As uh, at the beginning of the project, we really I like the picture of acupuncture with the culture, where you really put uh, and and uh, seed the uh, the the culture into the into the various uh, parts of the city, and. Uh, just to mention the, the other one, Sound City Days, for example, as well. In terms of visitors uh, in Košice, we were expecting a massive amount of visitors. In 2009 or 10, everybody was talking about uh, 1 million, 2 million visitors coming in 2013. Uh, but the average of capital of culture is about 12% increase in, in um, um, staying visitors. Um, so, as you can see, we had almost 17% increase in the year 2013 uh, from the year before. And uh, especially very interesting is figure for foreign visitors, which came 20% more foreign vis visitors uh, visited the city. And uh, overnight stays were 10% uh, more, but uh, also spend on accommodation, especially the beneficiaries as, uh, as, uh, as the hotels. Uh, must be really happy when uh, almost 40% increase in what people spend actually in uh, um, in uh, hotel accommodations in Košice. So these are the numbers uh, which uh, uh, changed uh, last year, as it is in every capital of culture. But the trend is that when, as we have re uh, we have um, put the profile of the city on a really higher level, now it should uh, the trend should be should be the. Um, the increasing uh, increasing one and uh, when it comes to projects in uh, in tourism uh, one of uh, the first was uh, established the DM dmo or visit koshice uh, which uh, we did in the uh, first half of 2010 many some of you are already part of it and uh, this is what i was talking about at the beginning it's uh, it's a really very different uh, environment we are uh, operating or we are working in. It's an environment where, where there was no history of really true collaboration and uh, to, to get people sit around one table to lock them there, as uh, uh, Tim said. It was very difficult at the beginning. So in, in the first workshops uh, we organized, um, people were just sitting and were being very suspicious, looking at each other, um, the group of attractions, group of hotels, really sometimes group of galleries and museums, the directors that didn't know each other. So it was really, <laughs> really interesting work to start on the, on the blank, um, blank sheet, to say. And uh, it was very nice to see one year later, when again we had some sort of uh, workshops and they, they were really eager to, 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 to share the information. Uh, to talk about new ideas and uh, to get uh, into the project, to, to involve them into the projects. So, uh, again, it, uh, it takes time. Uh, it takes time here to, to start, uh, but it's important that it has started in, uh, in Košice. And, uh, and uh, the idea of the project was, or is, that also in other regions which we have here, um, our guests from Romania, from Ukraine, uh, or from, from Hungary, that uh, you would be able to share or to, to get some sort of uh, uh, kick or to, to plant the seed in, in, the, in the destination uh, to start looking at, at uh, destination management or development in a, in a, different, uh, in a different ways, in a different way. Um, I was very happy to, because uh, the last two weeks I was uh, doing workshops in Romania and Ukraine with our partners and it was very diverse. It was very interesting for me to see such different uh, uh, environments, but uh, really very motivated people who who wanted to uh, to do this, uh, who wanted to make some change, uh, but in the background, 
of the system, it's not always it's not all, it's not always easy to do that uh, to do that change very quickly. But again, what the, what is the important is to start and to make the first uh, to first uh, to make some first uh, steps. Another project which uh, I just mentioned is uh, building a new cultural product. Uh, it was based on Shandor Marai uh, here in Košice, um, investment more than 150,000 uh, euros to, to build a new uh, new, th uh, new themed um, trail uh, of uh, Shandor Marai to revitalize the, his room, memorial room and um, so on. Uh, we have really in one year managed to get on the Hungarian market, which was the primary market. Uh, for that, uh, almost 100,000 euro of value of media value, which we have, uh, which have, we have risen about the destination, Košice 2013 and and Mare product. And uh, the project be why we are here today was um, the Karat Karat project, and uh, these are the basic goals which uh, were in the project to start networking. A very interesting workshop I've seen of, uh, of uh, Paul today. And uh, um, to start really planning and to start really uh, having some, some solid strategy and some, some plans um, which you do together, but don't forget to involve uh, the people and not to do it only from the, from the desk. Um, and new trends in destination management. This was one area which uh, we put into the project. And uh, I wanted to link it now to the future, future role of, um, <laughs> of destination management organizations or, or destination management. And uh, to say that uh, really two years, I mean six years ago, when we came here and we were talking about new trends, um, the six years have, have been so, um, so important in a change, how, how the market has changed, how the consumer behaviors has changed, that uh, we already have to adapt, uh, we already have to change our, our, our strategy, our planning, our tactics. And, uh, and uh, again, I'm getting the questions, are we ready yet? Are we ready to do that? So are we ready to wait? Are we ready to wait another 10 years? We maybe can wait, but our competition will, will not wait. So therefore, I think it's really sometimes, sometimes difficult, but uh, it's really important to, uh, to do that. And uh, talking about the future of demo, what has changed in, in, uh, in the past years is uh, the, the travel planning. Um, it's becoming really more, more complex, it's more unique, it's more individualized. As we learned today, there is no one product which fits all people. It really has to be uh, tailor-made tailor, tailor made for the um, interests of uh, the individual or of the, of the group. And uh, the current model of, uh, member of, of destination management organization, there is also a question of uh, um, is this model uh, going to, to last long based on membership fees because the model in Košice is that all partners are paying membership fee to the organization which is representing um, the destination and raising the profile. Uh, but how relevant uh, are today the, the marketing uh, activities? Um, in the past it was really the one source of information was the official tourist guide or some, some memories but uh, the shift to digital, the really digital revolution in, in past uh, f five, six years has, uh, has made a tremendous impact on how the, today the demo should really, wor uh, should really work. And, uh, and uh, especially the, the consumer, uh, the visitor um, is connected, is linked. And uh, the, the, this is also why we need to look at uh, our initiatives in a, in a very different way. Um, so I've put four key areas uh, where I think the outdated thinking needs to refocus, where we need to really look at uh, what, what changes has, uh, has, uh, uh, has been made. And uh, it's, about, uh, it's about the goal of consumer and stakeholder in the, in, uh, in the DMO or in a destination, because this is also changing. And in the past, the DMO was focusing on the goal of uh, uh, of stakeholder, what is m the goal of the hotel, what is the goal of restaurant, what is the goal of attraction, but 
today we really have to switch or, or shift to um, towards focusing on uh, on the consumer or on on the visitor. And uh, today, visitor really need a comprehensive information, and he's not getting it in the destination uh, website, let's say. And it's also the information which the consumers tend to not trust so much because it's official, it's official authority. So they're looking at, uh, at the different ways of uh, searching to, uh, information and uh, getting some feedback. And uh, then is the funding. That's also the challenge. Uh, it's very, it was very interesting for me to see the Birmingham budget, uh, which uh, almost uh, I can't even uh, compare to, to our budget. But uh, there is every year ch challenge uh, to get the money from the local government because the DMO is linked to the local authority. And also the challenge to get memberships or to get members and, the, and their fees and what they pay, what they get for. Is the return on this investment uh, worth it or not? Um, so the members are, real, are starting to look at different opportunities for, for promotion, but it's not because they they, they won't, but it's because the change in, uh, in the market has uh, been happening. Uh, then uh, the brand ownership, who owns the brand? Is it uh, the local DMO? Is it the city? Is it uh, um, usually it was developed on the, on the member products. But uh, today, every consumer who comes, every visitor who comes to destination, owns the brand and he speaks about uh, the city and spreads uh, the brand. Probably you, you have seen, but uh, I have a really interesting uh, initiative of Visit Sweden, uh, which is called Curators of Sweden. And uh, my first time when I saw that was in 2011, when I was in a um, conference in Helsingborg, uh, and it was about e-tourism and new trends and, and Visit uh, Sweden. Um, uh, marketing manager was presenting uh, the, this initiative of, uh, of Visit Sweden and it's basically about uh, that they give, uh, it's, it's linked to Twitter and they give uh, for one week, one citizen is the brand ambassador of the country. So he's commenting, he's telling what to do, uh, where not to go and uh, I'll just put the, put the video now for you. In Sweden, something unusual is happening. Normally, a country that has a Twitter account uh, has that account run by an official of the government. Not so in Sweden. Uh, the people there are, are actually in charge. In 2011, we became the first country in the world to let go of an official communication channel and hand it over to our citizens. Together with the Swedish Institute and Visit Sweden, we decided to break all branding principles and revolutionize the voice of a country. Every week, someone in Sweden is at Sweden, sole ruler of the world's most democratic Twitter account. For seven days, he or she shares their everyday life, private opinions and general reflections. After that, someone else does the same, but differently. This is a simple way to give tips and advice on where to go on your holiday in Sweden. And a great way to interact with people around the world. We can easily share traditional Swedish food, as well as our taste in music or cinema. You can come with us to a regular day at work. Or hang out with us on our free time both in the busy city and out in the wild. The response was overwhelming. We attracted over 25,000 followers from 120 countries and started thousands of conversations. Sweden trended on Twitter worldwide, sparking discussions on transparency in social media and how technology can be used for democracy as well as inspiring citizens in other countries to start similar accounts. The initiative has been featured all over the world.
Some think it's just a clever PR campaign. Others believe that it's a beacon of free speech in a time when we need it more than ever. For us, it's the only way to paint a fair picture of Sweden for the rest of the world. Swede by Swede. Tweet by Tweet. Yeah, so this is also the uh, interesting way uh, how to really involve the people who today are the brand ambassadors who, who come to destination. And uh, of course, there is a question of, um, of democracy in it. Uh, we speak about Sweden, which is a totally different country as, uh, for example, we here. Uh, maybe people are not ready for it, maybe, maybe yes. But it's uh, anyway a very, uh, very interesting story of, uh, of Visit Sweden, how, um, how they try to promote the destination and try to promote it in a very authentic and uh, unique way. And uh, therefore, the, the, the question is also who really controls this, uh, uh, the message, the brand, uh, the marketing uh, uh, message of uh, the destination. And uh, this was the idea before, just one way, really communication of some, some proposal or some uh, marketing message. But in today's world, it's, uh, it's really false, uh, false perception. And uh, especially uh, talking about new uh, media and completely new actors in, uh, uh, on, on the market, like Google, TripAdvisor, Booking, um, they have already claimed that uh, they are doing part of role of DMO. Um, the, for example, booking reservation systems of DMOs, are they needed anymore? Is it uh, maybe seven, ten years ago, there was no such a, a big uh, developed uh, reservation portal? Um, even though booking is uh, on uh, on the market uh, since 1996, but it m it made sense to make a reservation portal of the local stakeholders, so the people would come to one place and they just book uh, book the trip. But in today, uh, with uh, having uh, having, for example, uh, I took the booking as an example. It's a it's a massive uh, investment into the marketing of uh, of not only hotels. Um, they make presentation for you. They copyright uh, text for you on the presentation. You don't have a picture. They come. They take a picture of your hotel. They take care. They tell you what the market is, what the demand is, uh, where to look at, what is, and, and so on. And uh, they already started to do official city guides for for as a pilot. Uh, projects in Dubai, Prague, um, and uh, when you book online, you get straight away email with, "Oh, this is complimentary official guide. This is what we what we recommend." And they work with the local DMOs. They work with the local people, but they are going. They are creating it because they have resources. They have people, and uh, they are really uh, the huge player in in today's uh, today's online travel agencies uh, world. So. That's why the local DMOs and, and also the partnerships should uh, should look uh, or refocus uh, on uh, what marketing activities they do and what do they suggest to their client, uh, to the clients, to the to the partners, to the members, and uh, also the demo in the future um, should be also looking more on on um, giving the intelligence, giving the data information uh, to local partners so that they are able to really decide uh, uh, correctly and effectively, uh, rather than just providing information on, uh, um, on a destination. And uh, so what should demo do in the future? I've put three, um, three areas, and uh, it's uh, advisory, um, in my opinion, which repre represents really the, the, the data of the, of the visitors, of the tourism industry, and uh, reporting on the new trends, because the stakeholders doesn't have a time, uh, doesn't have resources to, to search, to find many times, and uh, therefore uh, the role of, uh, role of DMO, DMO um, should also look at, uh, uh, at that. And uh, to develop the new projects or new events, again, they, they should be source of information, what to do, what not to do, what is the trend, uh, we need to look at uh, things themed way, we need to build the stories and so on. And uh, this is where 
the DMO is becoming sort of consultant to local uh, local stakeholder and and advising them uh, for the right direction and for the for the right uh, decisions. And uh, the third one is uh, stewardship, uh, which is about really controlling uh, not only not only increase of tourism but uh, managing the impact in a in a destination. And uh, just to sum up. Uh, for bo uh, the bottom line of changing behavior or changing role of uh, of destination uh, marketing or management organization is um, um, a shift from just to be a massive marketing uh, agency and to market the destination to be more research and development to um, to be advisor, to be consultant for, to get the data, to really analyze uh, what is uh, consumer, what consumer wants, and uh, and so on. And uh, so, therefore, the the demo is uh, also advisor, is also investing uh, into the um, into the local events, into the local, into the promotion, and uh, sort of uh, coordinating, uh, stewarding the the tourism industry, and. Uh, I believe that there is a real challenge if of uh, of DMOs. Doesn't matter if uh, well established or newly uh, to be established. It's really um, a key to look at the new trends all the time, so that we don't uh, have to really run very fast in five years or in ten years uh, because our con our competition is uh, is ahead of us. And uh, just to some other key uh, recommendations. Um, is that uh, we need to change with the consumer. The DMO must change uh, the way uh, it uh, communicates, the way it uh, um, suggests um, uh, to local local members what uh, what to do. The marketplace has changed, uh, and uh, especially this focus on one-to-one -one or direct relationship. And uh, today, the consumer doesn't want a middleman. And DMO is, in a way, kind of a middleman. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have to be here, but uh, it's important that the role or the activities it does are different. And uh, does local DMO needs collective marketing? Is the collective marketing of members um, efficient? In today's world of TripAdvisor, Google, um, Facebook, Booking, and... Uh, also, the fourth one is that uh, um, the tour is really always more e more expected than than DMO can provide, and uh, and uh, it's not uh, just about digital uh, revolution uh, to to have it to have things online because people still want hard copies. They still want to come to uh, to information center and take the guide. Uh, but the, the key thing is. Don't don't underestimate this shift and this change which is uh, uh, which is happening today, and uh, I think uh, these new trends, this uh, this new marketplace, and and completely new and smarter local businesses uh, in today's online travel world, and uh, very well connected consumers where word of mouth is not anymore uh, uh, spreading the information, but it's coming from word of mouth to viral, to, to sharing it uh, across all your, uh, all your networks. And uh, the question is also if our DMO is ready to change, our destination is ready to change, because we're really too busy, because we don't have too many resources, we're missing to keep people to work. There is one guy working on thousands of uh, projects or having a key areas. So sometimes we don't see the change coming, and then we have to spend too much energy to um, um, to kind of uh, jump or or get uh, get back to uh, get back or get back uh, ahead of uh, ahead of um, our competition. So this was my my last uh, slide, a little bit into the future, or to give you some some fresh uh, um, some fresh info. What uh, um, I think we need to really look at, uh, and especially in a very uh, quickly changing uh, tourism environment uh, today, and uh, what the, the role of them should uh, should be. And uh, so this is my last slide. So thank you uh, very much for your attention. I would like to also thank for very good uh, organization and all partners uh, coming here today. Thank you very much. <laughs>